So my name is George Cordero, and I work with, uh, um, with Dell as a Global Alliance Executive. And I'm responsible for the um, link product set within, within uh, Dell and the relationship between Dell and Microsoft, what we do with Link. And I focus primarily on the business side, but I also go down into the weeds at some, at some points. Um, this session is not going to be a technical session. I'm not going to use big, long, complicated words or all these wonderful UC acronyms. I'm going to keep it things as simple as possible. Um, I find that if you keep it simple, people tend to understand the concepts of what we're talking about and, uh, and understand a simple telephone and what that does. Uh, to make it more than that and complicate things, it just, it's just a hassle. So with that being said, I'm going to go into the link platform. Um, and uh, in this particular slide, it says the link platform can be uh, fundamentally transform user behavior and culture of business, uh, or the culture of a business. But what does that mean? Uh, when you look at the UC platform has been able to complete the transformation of how we conduct businesses by replacing what our traditional desk used to be. And if you remember what our desk used to look like, we used to have a pen and paper and a telephone set on the desk. And that was what you gave your salesperson, and they went off and did their sales job and called people and wrote their notes, et cetera. We had this wonderful invention, uh, the computer that then replaced the pen and pad. And then we had our productivity suite that came along later, and all of that with the hopes that we were going to do less work and be able to have more time or more free time. Uh, unbeknownst to us, that's not exactly the case. But with those devices being replaced, the productivity suite of the computer, uh, it provides an avenue for uh, being able to do, uh, being able to actually create efficiency for your work that you didn't have before. So the last component that's on that desk is a telephone. So with the advent of, uh, of Link, you're able to actually integrate that telephone into your uh, productivity suite. And now it provides you with a whole new set of, of parameters where you now have mobility, you have your business continuity, you have um, appropriate access and secure access to the devices that you need. It doesn't matter which device you have, you can go pretty much anywhere, uh, any, any time and, and, and any place to, and be able to communicate and be connected to the rest of the world. Um, so that's how Microsoft has been able to empower the users to be able to actually uh, continue to do their work in a more efficient way. Um, I'm going to use the, the Kevin Turner degree of separation for this example. And um, in this particular uh, slide, the degree of separation in the alignment of information uh, technology to the business. Yes, sir? They're not moving? Yeah. Oh, wow. No, I, I've been moving them, but they're, uh, they're moving here. <laughs> uh, no wonder you guys are like, huh? Ah. <laughs> um, I don't know what, uh, what the issue is. Let's see. Nothing's moving, you're right. Technical difficulties. It's moving up here, but not moving the slides over here. All right, well, it's just a nice picture, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just a lady, and it says, I'll, I'll read the slide to you. It says, by positioning Link at the heart of the business process. Still not up? OK. All right, I'll just read the slide. By positioning the Link at the heart of the business process integration, it's possible to enable what we call communications-enabled business and deliver increased ROI. So with that being said, yes. There we go. All right. So you now you see the pretty lady with the, with the comment. So with that being said, what I was going to allude to is the Kevin Baker, or what is Kevin um, Bacon, sorry, um, the degree of separation. And what I'm going to allude to here is, and I'm going to state that the degree of separation alignment of, uh, of IT or information technology uh, to the business process is directly related to the realization uh, of significant ROI uh, for any business. So how do we align, the, how we align these two really determine how our business is going to be able to excel. 
in, in what we're doing from an efficiency standpoint and it, how we deliver that advantage over our, our competitors. So with that in mind, I'm going to go through this whole this, this deck and keep that in mind, how we align those two processes together. So um, in this particular slide, our approach is really to minimize. So when you think of the degree of separation, if you look at um, what IT does and what IT traditionally has done, it says, well, we do things this way. And our business processes and our folks in the business side say, well, no, we want this to be done this way. And there's always a fight between IT and, and the business process saying, hey, this is not the way we do things. I know that IT is confined and it has to do it this way, but we need it to do and follow the business, not the business follow what IT can do. So in order to minimize that degree of separation that I call it from IT and the business process, the better we align the two, the better the business advantage that you gain and the better ROI you're going to have. So that's the, through the integration of UC and the uh, productivity tools, that's what we gain by doing that. So how do we do that? In order to simplify that journey and be able to go through that process and what Dell typically does is uh, we execute uh, the alignment of IT and the business process by simply going through uh, the integration uh, by defining the requirements and doing a viability study in that first step by justification. In your second step, we do the deployment where we actually do the integration and then implementation and manage of that deployment. And then once that's deployment done as the final step where we get into the reporting and training user adoption, um, as long as we gain acceptance by the community and proper training is given uh, to the end users, that typically leads to a higher user adoption. So if you're given proper training and support, users tend to adopt the technologies and the business processes you're trying to implement. And then typically if those business processes are very well aligned, with what you're doing uh, from, from an IT standpoint. Uh, those dashboards and KPIs that you're providing, the tools and the integration you provide to that user, the, the tendency for them to adopt that is going to be much higher than what it's been in the past. So that's what we're trying to say here in, the, in this particular uh, slide and how we go about it. And CBP, is that, that communication-enabled businesses process, is really saying, how do you take your business and integrate that into what you do from an IT process? How do you simplify things for your users? for your community to be able to use those tools and find what you need, and I'll get into that a little bit later down uh, in the slides. So unified communications today, uh, what is it? Uh, there's there's a, a number of different factors that, uh, that impact what we do. So where is the market today? Uh, what are some of the challenges? How are the challenges being addressed today? Uh, what, how, why does this impact ROI, and then what are some of the examples? And I'll go through each one of these different sections and try to answer those questions. So where is the market today? We break this down into, into three different blocks. There's a technical part of it, um, where the, tech, the, the integration understanding of UC, uh, the UC, the environment, has pretty much reached more acceptance today than it ever has in the past. Um, the, the, um, the overwhelming demand and attendance for, that we've seen at the LINK conference, in this particular LINK conference, is also an example of more and more interest into what UC is doing. And then obviously the various scenarios provide numerous ways for customers to implement uh, the solutions um, on-premise or in the cloud or wherever, however they want to implement. Those are all different ways that you're, you're able to get up and, uh, up and running on LINK without uh, too many difficulties. So what are some of the challenges in achieving a full ROI for Link, and how can we depend? We have to depend on a number of things. Obviously, there's a technical integration. There's the reliability of the, of the systems that you put in place. And then the biggest component is that user adoption. And so we're going to go through each one of these different sections and talk a little bit about what we do from technical integration, what do we do from a reliability standpoint, and what do we do from the uh, user adoption, how to create better user adoption. So from a technical integration, what are some of the barriers and drivers uh, for UC uh, being deployed or not being deployed? So when you look at some of those co uh, common barriers, you know, the number one is usually lack of in-house expertise. You don't have the folks in, 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 in your IT department that understand uh, what UC does or how they can actually implement it. There's difficulties in, in, from that standpoint. Uh, there's systems and devices that, they, that are incompatible, so they have to do upgrades, so there's a cost associated with that. Uh, there's uncertain ROI. We don't know what the ROI is going to be. So why should I switch my telephony system or why should I go from my PBX and go to a UC system? What's that going to do for me? Can you show me what that's, what, what, what am I going to save by doing that? 
Um, budget constraints, so obviously, if you don't have the budget, you're not going to be able to do any sort of deployments. And then the quality of, of end user experience. What's that going to look like? Uh, how is that going to change what their processes are and, and what do they have to learn? So in real time, uh, what we provide from a Dell standpoint is we try to address those different points. Uh, we try to address it from uh, obviously expert consulting in terms of the, uh, being able to deploy. So that's that first uh, point that was said that uh, lack of in-house expertise. We try to provide that the ROI, the usage reports that people are, are requesting from us and say, hey, I need to know why I need to do this and show it to me with, uh, with dollars and cents. Um, we need to be able to do in terms of that uh, budget constraints, be able to give them a predictable uh, project cost and say this is what it's going to cost you to go to a UC environment. Um, also, in terms of devices and whatever you have to buy for that link environment, you want to be able to source it from one vendor. And Dell is capable of providing all of your UC needs from one location. And that's important, especially when you have to start dealing with a number of different vendors to get different components for that infrastructure that you're trying to replace or upgrade. Um, and then Dell also, obviously, with what we provide from the back end, provides the reference designs, the architectures, and all of the information that you need to be able to successfully deploy that environment and obviously lower uh, your costs and improve your telephony and communication costs. So in this particular slide, when you look at the uh, integration of a telephony system into your organization, whether you're doing an augmentation, you're doing a full-out replacement, and, or you're looking at a complete uh, link environment, it doesn't just impact some sections of the company. It impacts across the board. So with that impact across the board, when we look at the line of business managers and the salespeople and marketing, and what you're impacting from a sales process, obviously uh, you have to be um, cognizant of what you're going to be doing by replacing that system and how it's going to impact those folks. So from line of business, you need to ensure that you have business continuity. For the end users, you've got to be able to provide you know, access to bring your own devices, access to mobility, or provide them with mobility. You need to be able to give them the application availability. Uh, whatever they've been using before, they need to be able to use now and integrate to what they have into the new system. Uh, the server and networking managers folks, they're looking at that back-end architecture and how um, that's going to impact their, their server infrastructure. What are they going to do from a virtualization standpoint? What are they going to do from a networking perspective? How is that going to affect um, or impact uh, the changes for them? Uh, application domains and managers, again, they are looking at the applications and how the integration of these tools or the new communication tools will impact the actual application, the execution, productivity that folks are, are have been used to or using. What Dell does in terms of uh, being able to help with that uh, deployment, um, we can provide design, uh, uh, provide consultation and design a solution that's unique to the environment that you're in. Um, we start essentially with reviewing. Um, your organization needs and your user roles. We look at how we can uh, go through this process of, of implementation by going through a workshop to understand what your environment is. Um, we go through the assessment part of it where we actually go through and assess what you have in place, what would be needed to be required uh, to be replaced, what can be augmented, what devices you need. We go through the actual design phase. Do you want to do it a virtualized? Do you want to do it physical? Do you want it on-premise? Do you want it in a cloud combination of both, a hybrid environment? These are all different things and scenarios that we go through. And then we go through the implementation process upon the agreed design and, and, and what we've agreed with the customer. As we go through the implementation process, again, we talk about that degree of separation, making sure that we align IT with what the business processes and what the requirements are. And then finally, we provide the management and support and contribute to the ongoing success of that deployment. Um, and so these are our, our uh, individual components of what Dell can actually provide in uh, doing the UC environment. Um, in terms of uh, reliability or in terms of what we provide from an architecture standpoint, obviously I, I spoke about the one source and being able to have everything coming from one place. Uh, Dell has partnerships with a whole bunch of different partners, uh, and we're able to provide everything from the back end, from a server standpoint, from a networking perspective, uh, to the endpoint devices, and be able to integrate that with all of the third-party devices uh, from SPCs and SBAs, et cetera, 
uh, into the, this, this UC partner ecosystem that we have. And we're constantly onboarding and bringing on new partners so that you can rest assured that uh, any of the UC needs that you have, you can obtain from Dell. So let's talk a little bit about reliability and what we do in that particular scenario. And these are all, these are all components of what actually impacts your ROI. So in this particular case, uh, Dell has reference design architectures that are already in place for a certain amount of users. So in this case, we have a base of 2,500 users, and we create a virtualized environment using, obviously, uh, Microsoft technologies, and we um, put together and enable this environment for UC Voice. So UC Voice, messaging, conferencing, we build all this together, and we put this rec reference architecture with high availability. And we provide that to, for the use of our customers as a base to start their uh, UC environment. Uh, the sizing of the architecture follows all of Microsoft's best practices. We use the, um, uh, the, the Microsoft uh, stress tools to actually test the workloads. So we put this through a rigorous amount of, of, uh, um, of, of testing in our labs and do a, a thorough lab study. We also look into high availability. So high availability, we look at uh, two different components. We look at the infrastructure availability and the application availability. So from an infrastructure standpoint, think of all of the back end, uh, the servers, the connections from, uh, between the, the different devices, the networking. We, and we ensure that if there's any point of failure on that back end, that we have redundancy provided to be able to ensure a business continuity of the back end. The same applies to the application front end. So if the application fails on one side, there's no one single point of failure. So all of those uh, design factors are taken into consideration as we go through this validation of this, of this um, architecture. So we talked about the, the back-end hardware, uh, your back-end IT, your server infrastructures, and the redundancy and the high availability. The next portion of that is we get into the networking piece. Obviously, when you deploy a link environment, um, link has a certain impact on your networking capability. Um, link, uh, as a traffic per se, is a protocol that's uh, encrypted. So you can't necessarily decrypt and say, the traffic that's going from one device or from one user to the next user, I can actually look at that traffic and say I'm going to prioritize it. When you look at real-time traffic or non-real-time traffic within a network, it, the network doesn't care, nor does it understand a typical networks don't understand what it is or what traffic is going across that network. So what that does is, uh, and many a times, uh, depending on the, infrastructure, the network infrastructure you have in place, you may, have, uh, you, you may actually start a phone call, and that phone call won't actually be executed, or it'll start uh, dropping, or you'll have intermittent connection for that, or you'll, you'll just get the uh, 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 as it comes through on the other end. And the reasoning for that is that, again, the network infrastructure doesn't necessarily determine and cannot give it a QoS in most cases. Um, what we are able to do with our, our um, networking gear and technologies is we're actually able to uh, decrypt and understand the link and see the patterns of the link communications, see how that traffic is going across and be able to provide tags for that to provide a, a, a quality of, of, of a service for that traffic and be able to um, maximize uh, the delivery of that traffic ahead of other traffic that's on real time. Um, we do this through uh, what we call a Power Connect W uh, series. So what does that do? I mean, it's, you, you look at access points, for example. Uh, I don't know how many of you have experienced this, but if, you walk from, if you're in an organization and you walk from one building to the next, how many times might you be on a link call and you experience a drop of that call because you went from one access point to the next? Anybody experienced that? So when you look at that, what typically happens there is the transfer between the radio, the radio signals between those two points can't actually transfer that traffic well enough. So what happens is that the, you get a certain timeout, and between, because of that timeout, it'll actually drop that call. So you lost the call, and what you typically do is you call that person again. In this particular case, what we do with our technology in, in the Power Connect W series is uh, we have an adaptable radio management response, and it essentially will be able to take, um, depending on the frequencies that you're talking and that call is being processed, it'll actually be able to pass all over the, and pass that communication on to the next access point so you have a seamless conversation no matter where you are within that building. And that's part of that quality of experience that we give our users by using our networking technology. Yes, sir? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. So that being said, um, I, I'm mentioning this, the networking part because that is part of the ROI overall. And when I get towards more into the depth of the ROI, or at, at least as, as, as deep as I can go, you'll understand why I'm, I'm mentioning all of these different points. Because the reality is, is whether it's Dell hardware or whoever's hardware, uh, we're talking about the back-end infrastructure. We're talking about the networking infrastructure. We're then talking about user adoption. And those are three major key components of what drives the ROI for a link environment. So we talked about the, the, ser the server back end. We talked about networking. Now and we talk about a little bit more about the actual tools for testing. So once you have these two in place, you need tools to be able to tell you what's happening within that environment. So we have a couple of tools. Uh, Spotlight on messaging essentially provides you with information about any diagnostics and problems that are happening within your messaging system. Obviously, messaging and exchange um, are very closely tied to UC. Um, the next one is the message stats. Message stats gives you um, way more information that you would typically have um, from, from Link and the, the typical tools that are provided with Link as, as a Link server. Um, so it provides you reporting analysis and all sorts of different things that uh, it uh, gives you that will provide you with the trends, analysis, and reports that you need to actually determine what exactly is your ROI for that UC environment, as well as um, a diagnostics of problems. An example of that would be the next slide. So here's what you typically see with uh, uh, message stats. Uh, you, see the vo um, you can do voice callback charges if you're doing that within your organization. Uh, you can see who's, who's actually using UC, who's not. Uh, you can create custom reports. You can provide detailed billing information. Uh, and then with all of that being said, you can actually see what your ROI is by, from that environment by using this tool. So to finish off the section on the reliability piece, um, Dell delivers like a full uh, portfolio design to help customers with the right use CNC environment uh, to suit whatever their, their requirements are, goals and budgets, et cetera with the desired ROI that they're looking for. Um, the, from, from the consulting standpoint, uh, at, the, at the very bottom of the slide, uh, working towards the very top where the workloads are, for, for Microsoft workloads, we essentially will provide across the board from reference architectures to IT management, all of the different tools that you need uh, to be able to actually um, uh, obtain the ROI that you're looking for. So let's move into end user adoption. Uh, and this one's a very important piece of that, uh, of those three different components. So how do you persuade your users who don't want to be persuaded? How do you get your folks to use the environments that you put in place? Anybody have a good answer to that question before I try to answer it? So you do a UC migration, and you provide this wonderful tool to say, OK, now you don't have to have a telephone on your desk. And by the way, without that telephone on your desk, you have mobility and access to mobility that you never had before. So you don't necessarily need to be in the office. I don't know too many of us that would not say, hey, that sounds like a good thing. I don't want to be in the office. I'm going to get out of here, right? Um, so that's a perk of itself. But there are people that that is foreign. If they're used to picking up a telephone and saying, this is how I dial and I can, this is what I'm used to, it's very difficult to say, I now have no phone on my desk. And here's your working environment. And by the way, you can work here. You can work at home. You can work at Starbucks, wherever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, it, it can be very foreign, and that's more of a cultural thing. And we'll get into that in the next slide. Um, so you, can't, you can lead a horse to, to water, but you can't make him drink. But if the horse is thirsty, it's going to drink, right? So the key is making a horse thirsty. And so the key for the adoption of the user is really to say, hey, this is so compelling for you to use that you're going to want to use it because it's going to make your job easier. And if it doesn't make your job easier, then let me know what I need to do to make it easier for you. Um, and if, we, if you're able to effectively tell them and show them that they can more easily accomplish the, tax, the tasks that they need to accomplish throughout the day, and maybe even have spare time, uh, that's the caveat, maybe spare time. But if they actually can, can, you can show them that the productivity will actually allow them to do more within the day than they were ever able to do before, and, be, and more so in the sense that I can actually travel and be able to do a phone call. If you have a, a, a desk on your phone, you can't really leave that desk and be able to execute your work. But if you have access to uh, your mobile phone and you can actually execute the calls while you're on the road, that's a lot of productivity that you didn't have before. 
So combining that, all of the perks that the user would get from being able to take the system with the reliability, and most importantly, proper training. We always overlook training. We say, yeah, we've created this great system. We've, do, we've done all these wonderful things that we put on a user's desktop. And then we say, well, go for it. Have fun. We don't give them the training. If we actually give them the training, we'll actually see a substantial increase in the usage of what, we, of what they're using for those tools. So with the proper training and ease of use to their business operations, the integration of, of those tools is much easier, and the acceptance of those tools is much better for the user. Now, we have to remember that there are different types of people that use these tools. And so um, based on where you are in that generation, there's different ways that you go about communicating. So if you're a traditionalist, let's have a conversation. I want to see you face to face. Right? I want to go and see you. I want to talk to you. If you're a boomer, you might say, call me on my cell. I'm OK with that. Um, if you're a, a next generation, you're going to say, send me an email. I'm, I'm, that's fine. We can communicate the email. I don't even have to ever see you. Email's fine. Um, a Y gen, text me. Um, the millenniums, I can't even say that word, so I apologize. The, the, the younger generation, that's Facebook, social media, tweet, everything that you see out there, that's their mode of communication. And this is very true. And this being the case, with UC, you can actually cater to all of these different ways of communication that you were not necessarily able to before. Um, so this all provides all of the different users within your environment a way to communicate in a fashion that they want to do. If they want to email, if they want to text, if they want to call, if they want to actually see the person, that you could do all of that through, this, uh, uh, through the UC environment. So how do you realize, or how do you drive UC uh, sorry, how do you, uh, UC drives realization of, of that elusive ROI? How do you figure out what that ROI is? Now, we've gone through, now remember, we've gone through different parts of this deck. We've talked about the infrastructure, we've talked about the networking, we've talked about the user adoption, and we've talked about how the business aligns with the IT process, or what business process aligns with IT. Those are all components of that ROI. So, in this next slide, um, why using UC enables significant ROI? Well, what does it do? It reduces per minute costs of calls, right? Because you're using now a SIP trunk. You're using data on the back end. You may not have to go outside of your network to call you know, Charlie you know, five buildings down because you're all on the same uh, IP network. You now provide fixed telephony assets and costs. So all of this is um, cost savings. Uh, you provide these hard, tangible benefits, business benefits. You, you don't have to travel to go to, uh, to your customer's site. So there's a, an actual hard cost there that you're saving. Um, you may not have to, as I said earlier, um, your employees may not have to go into your building. So you don't need a big, a humongous building. You might be able to do with a, a, small, a much smaller building because now you can have a remote workforce. And they still have all the capability that, they, that you've had before and not necessarily being housed within your, your corporate buildings. Um, you have a single platform. There's value in having that single platform. If you have, if your if your backend is based on Microsoft technologies, or even if it's it's a hybrid, there is still value in being able to manage that environment as a single platform across the board. Um, there are use uh, there are use cases that are hard to make up. Um, I'll give you some in a little bit, and these are numbers that we have internally, and it gives you an example that these are not numbers that are just made up. They're they're actual real numbers, and they add to that business value. So why do these UC enable significant ROI? Um, we have three sets of questions here and then some, some, uh, some points. But um, you know, would you recommend to a colleague using UC or using Link? And 93% of the folks in the study said yes, we would, would definitely recommend. 1% uh, said no, which is interesting. I, I, so I would love to know why. I don't know. I can't answer that question. But 1% said no, but 93% said absolutely saw the value in it. Um, the second question is, would you consider giving up your desk, uh, your, your, your desk phone? This one's a little more interesting because you can see the attachment to that desk phone. So 52% would say, yeah, I'm OK with giving it up because I understand and see the, the, uh, uh, see, see the benefits of having you see. Uh, but you still have 25% not really that sure and 23% not so sure or not wanting to at all. Now, this, 
I, I think the impact of this particular question really comes down to the reliability of the environment. If your environment's not reliable, and if that um, the user picks up the phone or picks up that link and wants to execute a call and cannot for whatever reason, that makes that not sure or no go up incrementally. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, even, having, uh, even having a device like for, for especially for executives in, in companies that do the UC changeover, they still very much want a phone on their desk. And they want that phone on it because it gives them that, I guess, a false sense of security that they have a phone. But if there's something wrong on the infrastructure, that phone's not going to work anyway. But it's that false sense of security. It's, it's being used. And having that physical connectivity. I'm going. It's a comfort. It's a, it's a it's a comfort level for the for the user. Now, for um, the traditionalists, the, baby, the maybe even the boomers, that is a requirement. When you start getting to the younger generations, they couldn't care less whether they have a phone on their desk or not. Uh, they'll use every possible medium. Whoever they're trying to get to, and they're really quite fine with that. It's more for uh, the older generation who grew up with the telephone that really would like that device on a desk. So Link has improved our team's collaboration. A, a pretty strong 78% of the folks would agree to that. And it, for us internally, it definitely increases our capability to communicate. It makes it very easy to see who's online, who's not online. And I'm, I'm going to go with the assumption that everybody here knows what Link does or probably has a Link deployment, correct? So folks will agree to 78% that it does definitely help. Um, when we look at the last three bullets here, 83% agree that Lynx helps me uh, to get the person and information I need more quickly. Now, keep these in mind because as we start, uh, we go into a little bit more into ROI, these are all things that impact the ROI of why you would want to, what does that UC system represent? 57% agree that by using Link conferencing with my colleagues, I reduce the need to use external conferencing systems. Correct? If I use my mobile phone, I use my PC to actually execute the call. Now, this was a little, a little bit kind of a. Uh, if I can use my PC to, use, um, to, to, to actually execute that call from wherever I'm at, as long as I have a connectivity, then I'm good. But the other portion of this is that you have to realize that you uh, have clients that will go on your mobile phone. And if you have connectivity, then you can actually use your, your, um, your mobile phone to actually execute those link calls. So with all that being said is, how does Dell measure ROI and UC solutions, with UC solutions? You know, how do you measure uh, this complexity? How do you look at that? How do you build the business prospects before they actually uh, go to the um, how do you help explain you see advantages to, to competing key investments? They're going to make uh, their or money back from their. And what we do with, uh, with, uh, within Dell and for all of the engagements with our customers that are looking at UC uh, and UC benefits, uh, we have um, um, worked with UC strategies and we actually have developed uh, um, a um, UC benefit and ROI analysis tool. And this tool basically goes, if you think of everything we talked about up until server They are currently very these pairs. So the different company is just the nightmare. So we want to make sure that it's just one system and it's consistent. And we can work on the because we have the, the analysis in TD. to support the, the settings are substantial. So, so you know? there, there we go. All right. So the, the Dell UC benefit tools, uh, benefit and ROI analysis tool, essentially 
enables us to be able to take into account everything that we've talked about uh, up until this point and input that into this, into this tool. And then it provides a detailed cash flow and depreciation uh, or depreciation, depreciated ROI, sorry. Um, it, it does support the different types of environment that you'll have. It can do an on-premise, it can do the in the cloud or hybrid. It can do whether you're looking at a PBX augmentation or a PBX replacement. And it can go from, from 20 seats to 100,000 seats. Uh, so we use this tool and essentially in, the, in about 10 minutes, uh, we go through 10 questions and then we can deliver an actual report uh, that provides all of the information that a CXO level person would want to see or CFO would want to see about um, the ROI of that link environment and what they could be expecting from it. Um, there's a, a lot of detail that, is, that goes behind this tool and what I'm trying to do here is just simply capture in terms of ROI and, and what we've talked about from all the different components of a UC implementation, how that affects what the ROI would be. Um, so the tool is actually used by our, our um, what we call our SSCs or our services sales executives and our, U, uh, our UC technical salespeople. And, and they will actually go out and while they're doing that part of that, I talked about the assessment piece that they do with the customer. They'll do the assessment piece with them and actually go through this tool and provide that report to that customer. Say, here's what you could be expecting and here's what you look at from an RR perspective. Um, I'm not going to go into detail of the actual tool itself because that's something that we provide as, as a service and it's, doesn't, it's not a, a, a costly service. It's something that we provide for, for, our, uh, for folks that are looking at uh, deploying UC. Uh, so at the end of the day, it basically generates a complete ROI uh, analysis and financial analysis of that environment and, and really helps simplify the CXO's life in terms of making the decision or the decision maker of whether or not UC is the right solution for them and do they want to move forward with it. Um, this is just a sample of what we experienced at Dell in terms of reduction and what ROI looked like. So when we look at um, external services that we were consuming before, uh, we essentially had, um, we, we hosted about two million uh, video conferencing minutes per month is what we were doing. Um, the, as, the minute we adopted, we started from, the minute we adopted UC, we went from 250,000 minutes to two million minutes is what this is, is saying. Um, we saved over a million dollars in the, in the consolidation and, the, and elimination of PBXs. So over the um, last two years, and actually last year, we had a session here that actually talked about um, our consolidation and what we went through, and, and that's the savings that we, we experienced is uh, just over a million dollars of savings in the consolidation. And that's essentially, we had a lot of Cisco boxes in, in different uh, uh, remote offices, and we were able to consolidate all of that into a, a UC environment. Uh, we obviously cut li licensee costs and lower our costs for the uh, process flows. So if you think of how that uh, impacted business, the process flows were also uh, were rationalized and were able to be localized for the different areas, especially in the areas where we uh, consolidated and removed uh, PBXs and replaced with link the processes there with the latency and the time that they would wait for responses were, was much better. Um, in terms of mobility, I mean, this is a big one for Dell because a lot of Dell folks actually do not work in the Dell buildings. Um, so we have over 100,000 workers that, are, uh, that use UC. And so it allows us to be wherever we happen to be and, and be connected regardless of where we're at on whatever device that we're on. Um, so that's a, a tremendous um, benefit for us. Um, increased job satisfaction, innovation, and customer engagement. Uh, it is a, a great tool to show to our customers. Um, I mean, we showed here in the environment uh, that we're in and we're able to uh, demonstrate how easy it is for us to communicate with our colleagues, our peers, our customers. So it, it definitely is a, a, a fantastic tool to use. Um, empowering users with easy access, that goes without saying. Um, we're, we're constantly uh, connected on our link uh, environment and we're able to connect with everyone uh, within our organization and as well as outside of our organization. Um, th this is interesting in terms of numbers from a, a connected workplace which provides all these different scenarios is that we estimated that 13 million watts, kilowatts of energy uh, and more than 15, uh, 14 million dollars in annualized expenses were, were cut by actually using UC. So if you take that over 100,000 employees and 
uh, what we're able to save in terms of travel and power, et cetera, from the real estate, uh, that's substantial savings. So if you take that down and you bring it into whatever environment if you're in, you will see those savings as well. The next portion I'm going to go into is, is CBP, or the Communication Enabled Business Process. And this is really talking about how and uh, what is the impact of being able to integrate your business within a link environment, or within your environment as a whole, actually. So CBP, uh, organizations, as you all know, are made up of people, things, and processes. How well all three of those interact really determine uh, how well your business does in reality. Um, everyone's experienced that finding uh, who or what you're looking for can be really hard in an organization. Does everybody know everyone within the organization? I mean, I'm assuming if you have a small organization, you do. But if you have a fair size organization, I'm willing to bet that you don't know all the resources that you have available to you. I, I, would, I would highly find it surprising if you know everyone within your organization, if you know what all their roles are. I know that within Dell, our roles change. Uh, every year, right? And most organizations' roles change every year. People move, and so how do you find these people? Um, so if you actually are able to use CBP and integrate the business processes into Link, you can actually alleviate a lot of these common issues. So what kind of uh, CBP applications are there? There's typically four different kinds. Uh, there's a contextual communication. You're basically talking with the other person and you're finding information either through texting or through the actual communication of email or through sending an IM or a messaging. That's, that's a type of, of communication uh, of business process. There's also the uh, connecting to the right people before you know where they are. So there's, in the integration of applications essentially tell you who are the responsible parties for that does this, that, or the other thing. And you can find out who they are. Um, there's the communication enabled things, applications, the dashboards. These are all things that you can actually pull into your C environment and be able to utilize. Uh, and then there's the custom user interfaces. There are um, organizations that will customize the APIs of a link interface to do what it is that they need to do. A simple example would be uh, an organization, a Salesforce organization that uh, plugs their backend quota system and a salesperson goes to their link, you see their link uh, um, command line and basically types in quota. And when that person, because he's authenticated to that environment, types in quota, it pops back and says 69%. Well, that salesperson knows that's exactly where they're sitting at quota at that point in time. So that's a very easy business integration of telling that salesperson what their quota is without having to go into a backend system, to go into some dashboard to go find out what their quota was. So that's, that's a simple integration or a simple way of, of uh, being able to do that and provide that information. I have a few other examples here, I, and I thought that pictures are worth a thousand words. So the examples that you have on the screen are probably good examples to, to show you how the integration of CBP into your link environment actually can provide the information that you want at a relatively easy and, and, and fast pace. So that first one on the left is it integrates link with SharePoint skills. So it's, easy, it's an easy location for personnel. So you can see here through the person says, you know, so-and-so, um, the first person is application development and then application integration. So if you're looking for that sort of person, you've got a list of people to hear that shows you who they are. Um, the second one is, is a, the actual uh, finding the resources. And here, when you click on that person, you can actually go and open the site, the my site for that uh, person because you've gone through link and it shows you everything that that person can do and what what the role is within the organization. The one on the far right um, is the, it presents data about the users based on a caller ID. So when that person calls in, all the information that's person, uh, pertinent to that person provide, pops up on the screen for that person who's taking a call, for example, in the call center, exact, as an example. This next slide is, um, essentially does the, um, it's the integration and translation of language. So what happens when you're talking to your colleague in Germany and you don't speak German? Uh, you can easily type in the message and actually instant message with that user back and forth. And a link will actually do the, uh, um, the language conversion in that message as you're speaking to that person. Uh, so that's another way of integrating a, a process or business process to be able to just effectively do communication. Um, this, the one on the right is the collaboration and CRM tracking. 
um, SharePoint is, is the front end here. And this front end of SharePoint allows you to display uh, multiple back ends. You, you, you know, these charts, for example, the pie chart can be pulling from one database. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the bar charts on the bottom can be pulling from another database. And then you've got information about users and items available to work on and the different tasks that are going on. It could be coming from a Visio or a project back end. Um, so you have all of these different dashboards being brought up that can be easily accessed and are fully integrated with Link. So this is, th these are all different ways that you integrate your applications within that Link infrastructure within your back end and provides you the information that you need at, at your fingertips without having to go dig and remember what was that website, what was that SharePoint site, uh, where do I need to go for that tool. It, this really simplifies life. And when you're able to pull these things together, and you're, you're able to pull these business processes that people use and make it simple for them to access, this becomes an invaluable tool and your ROI shoots up. So in this particular case, I'm gonna um, summarize with um, what Dell does and, and what we've done thus far. Um, and this is essentially in terms of um, um, Migrations, uh, we've done over 4 million uh, mailbox migrations, a uh, number of Active Directory migrations. Uh, this is just to reiterate the fact that Dell has done uh, uh, quite a bit in the industry, and has uh, quite a bit of deployments, and we've actually deployed over 350,000 seats of, of uh, UC. So um, the expertise in, in that domain is, is, is quite high, and we have a number of certified MCMs uh, on, on board that um, help deploy these environments for you. Um, so where do we go from here? We, we essentially recommend that uh, you explore UCNC if you're not using it at this point um, and see what it can actually do for you and how you can merge it into your business. Um, you can experience UC um, by communicating with any one of our Dell folks and be able to actually experience what UC is like. Uh, be able to do simulations. You can work, we have uh, demo centers that you can actually do simulations and work uh, and test things out and kick the tires essentially. Uh, and then have, executive, have an executive briefing and, and see what uh, we can go through the ROI exercise and show you what you can actually save and what you can do with that. And that's it. That's all I have. Are there any questions? Yes, ma'am. For at Dell, we have 100,000 users. We've deployed 350,000 users. Yes, we'll use external vendors for, for uh, over 250, and there's, there's actually a number of different ways. And, and remember, um, there are a number of different tools to be able to do that sort of conferencing. We've had, um, I've been working with a, a, a school in particular that um, is distributed over five continents. And part of their issue is they, they have a link backend infrastructure. Um, and they want to be able to do distance learning, and they want to be able to provide that for over 2,000 students in one class. So that means that many endpoints, right? Uh, so there are, different, um, there are different ways to be able to do that. Um, and in this particular case, we used a, a, a partner of ours that is able to execute uh, the distribution of that, that classroom session to all 2,000 users. Uh, but it rides on top of Link. So we talk about CVP. This provides a virtual 3D environment to the Link environment on top of it. So their communications and, and their uh, exchange of messaging and voice, et cetera, will ride on top of the UC environment. Um, but they actually see and walk into a, a room in uh, and, and a virtual, it's almost like a, an Xbox Connect game. They actually walk into that room, sit down on a chair, and they're in that conference room. And they're watching the presentations that are being put up on the screen. Yes, completely interactive. They, ra they literally raise their hand to ask a question. Um, so there's all sorts of different tools to, to be able to do that. You can have you can have the uh, combination of both. That's not an issue, um, and you can do uh, there's. You're talking almost like a call center, right? No, just like if you're an executive, you're an administrator, you're just making answer phone calls to like five executives. 
Yes. Yes. I'm sure you can route that scenario. Yes, you can route. Yeah, you can route though that uh, the person that actually answers the calls for the five people, they actually have uh, can be given delegated rights to actually do that, and that's part of the um, that's part of Active Directory. Actually, you can do that through that, uh, and then Link just follows follows sweet with that. So. Mm -mm. Yeah, if you have the link client, you can redirect the call to whoever is the delegated administrator for that person. So if you've got the five executives, they simply say, I want to redirect the call to those five people, and that's all they have to do to, to the person that is their admin. Oh, I'm sure the admins can push back. I don't want to ask them, but if it's part of their job, then yeah. But, but from, the, from a technical standpoint, that's just simply forward the call to my admin to answer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically just going in and clicking on a button saying. Yeah, I've seen that. I think they're still getting some pushback from admin. They want to put in the phone. And they want the button. They want to learn. Yes. Uh, it, you're right. Um, but then there's also the advantage, for example, the admin who gets that and, and, and has, is, let's say they're using a soft client in combination with a phone. If they see the number for the exec one pop up, and they're talking to that person, and all of a sudden someone on exec two pops up, they can simply switch over to that, uh, answer that line. And let's say that those two people are calling for the two different execs actually want to talk together. She can simply drag them and connect them together and she's done. So there's a lot, it's, there's a lot of simplification that is provided to them without having to actually learn a system on. The unification of that system, the, the, the soft phone, and, and with the usage of even a, a physical phone on a desk is a lot easier and it makes it unified across the board so they don't have to use a different system. Now, if they're using an Avaya system and that's what they're using for that rep, they can, they can continue to operate that way and they can have both. And we can actually make the line from the uh, Avaya system go to the link or link go to the Avaya, whichever way they want. Any other questions? So I think I'm supposed to tell you about a couple other things. The pavilion, demos, 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 demos. You can go and see. And there's the party tonight. Don't forget the party. Uh, the hands-on labs uh, located in uh, the LRS and on the third floor. And here's the MyLink application. Uh, how many people use that, the, the application of MyLink? Cool. And then the last one is, uh, or actually the second last, is the uh, discussions that are going on when you have meals. There are cer certain different areas that you can actually meet with different folks who are looking for uh, particular things or uh, different topics that you can sit with and, and discuss. And then the last one is please fill out your evaluations uh, and you can win prizes. I think it's new car, boat, and that's it. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming.